birth control continues to be the surprise issue of this election year. Because of the health reform law that we passed, women finally have more power to make their choices about their health care. The federal government should not tax these people to pay for Planned Parenthood. If we are going to pay for your contraceptives and thus pay for you to have sex, we want you to post the videos online. They want to control how we dress. They want to control how we act. They even want to control the decisions we make about our own health and our own bodies. We have a Republican Party that is led by John Boehner in the House of Representatives waging a war against women and women's health care. It is completely wrong for politics to be getting involved in this issue at all. This is about a woman's health care, a woman's life, and this should not be in the political realm. A way of, of control uh, for the ruling class, which is often the men, is to, is to subjugate the, the women, and one of the most effective ways to do that is to, um, is to deny them their access to reproductive health. The new health care law requires religious hospitals, colleges, and other institutions to include contraceptive coverage. Preventive care should include coverage of contraceptive services such as birth control. Contraceptive should be about equality and about freedom for women. You know, if you look at what men can do to control their reproduction, they can go to any supermarket or any pharmacy and pick up condoms and have a very reliable form of birth control to control their fertility. Women don't have that right. We have to go to a physician, we have to get a prescription, we have to go to the pharmacy, we have to get it filled. And now we have government coming in trying to take that away. If the president does not reverse the department's attack on religious freedom, then the Congress must. Under the bill, in order for a woman to have her birth control paid by her employer, she needs to prove that she takes the pill for medical reasons and not to prevent pregnancy. It is a crazy situation when in 2012 there is a House hearing to talk about contraception and for some reason the Republican chair brought before that committee an entire panel of men to talk about contraception. You're having a panel on women's health. Where are the women? Why would we not have an equal number of women and men? You can have an entire panel of women. They are dealing with it every single day of their lives. No woman can call herself free until she can choose consciously whether she will or will not be a mother. I love this quote. Contraceptives are so important. They allow families to decide how many children they choose to have, what spacing they choose to have. We forget how dangerous and how scary pregnancy can be. I mean, women used to die very often in pregnancy, and it's because of our ability to control reproduction that so many women today don't have those complications. Sandra Fluck is a Georgetown University law student who appeared at a Democratic event last week, arguing the Obama administration rule requiring free contraception is critical for women's health. It makes her a slut, right? It makes her a prostitute. She wants to be paid to have sex. 50% of what I use birth control pills specifically for, but also IUDs and other contraceptive methods, is not for birth control. It's for controlling numerous other issues besides contraceptive purposes. Title 10 is a program that actually started in 1970. It was a bipartisan initiative that gave federal grants to provide comprehensive health care for women. Title X funding is about providing uh, women across the country with access to, to health care. I mean, just basic family planning. Not only just contraceptive benefits, but breast exams, pap smear screening, which is so important for prevention of, of invasive cervical cancer. In so many parts of the country, it's the only place they have access to health care. 
because they are poor, they don't qualify for Medicaid, they're working, but they don't have health insurance. 70% of the women who are served by Title X funds are actually below the poverty level. 66% are uninsured. I just can't quite get into the heads of the Republicans on wanting to shift women back decades by not allowing them the access to health care that they need. It appears as of now we are headed for a government shutdown. Republicans keep pushing this rider, this provision, banning all federal funding to Planned Parenthood. If liberals are uh, unwilling to embrace even this modest step toward fiscal discipline, then I, I say shut it down. They can shut down America's government over women's access to health care. Ironic that they would say this is going to save funds for uh, and help our deficit when it's actually going to cost more. Preventive health services save money. If you're taking birth control pills, you're less likely to get pregnant. Tell me which is more expensive. None of this makes sense. If you want to lower your health care dollars, if, then we should absolutely be preventing unintended pregnancies and we should be providing preventative health care. It's going to cost us a lot more to take care of them walking into an emergency room than it is in the small investment of preventative health care. It's such a small amount of money that does so much good. The largest abortion provider in America should not also be the largest recipient of federal funding under Title X. There are so many groups that try to make this about abortion. Again, Title X funds do not um, provide abortions. No federal dollars go to any abortions in this country. That is the law. In our federal government, we have someone who stands up and says, If you want an abortion, you go to Planned Parenthood. And that's well over 90% of what Planned Parenthood does. It's exactly the opposite. 97% is comprehensive health care for women. 3% is abortion services. I don't understand the political agenda. If it's about reducing the number of abortions, then it doesn't make sense. Because if you want to reduce the number of abortions, support Title X programs, support programs like parent, Planned Parenthood, you are preventing abortions. Mississippi's personhood amendment is part of a national movement to restrict a woman's ability to obtain a legal abortion. This week, lawmakers in New Hampshire will vote on a bill requiring pregnant women to wait 24 hours for an abortion. A furor gripped Virginia state legislature in recent days as Republicans pushed to mandate ultrasound testing, which would be internal for many women seeking abortions. The legislatures in some of these states, Texas, Mississippi, Nebraska, have already put in very draconian measures to try to prevent women access to the full range of health care. You look at, for example, the um, transvaginal ultrasound bill in Virginia, and you have someone who's trying to, a, a government that's trying to step in and say that a woman needs an unnecessary uh, procedure. You know, unfortunately, I don't think people understand the medicine enough, and I think even some of the members of Congress don't understand the medicine enough to be making these decisions. There's a, a bill that was passed in Ohio that does not allow for terminations or interruptions of pregnancies after 20 weeks of pregnancy. You know, we have patients routinely come in for a mid trimester ultrasound, and we discover that there's something catastrophically abnormal. Com completely unable to, that child is completely unable to survive, they have no option but to continue that pregnancy now. So in this sense, these bills aren't just misguided, they're dangerous. They're dangerous. They're dangerous for women. Enough is enough. These, these things have been decided. We want women to have the full range of choices in their lives, and we're going to fight to protect it. We have begun to be complacent, I believe, and taking for granted the protections and benefits and access to services that uh, we, uh, we assume, sort of, and particularly young people assume, is going to be there forever and for everyone. Damage is being done today. Women are suffering today. Women are not equal in different states because of where they live. 
if it should come to pass, then we're back to ground zero where we've been in the past, where women have had to go back alleys for certain treatments and, and uh, incurring uh, uh, deprivation of their opportunities to succeed in the workplace, uh, to go on and build productive lives. It sets us back. Every woman in this country should have, the, have equal access to the full range of healthcare choices, and we have to win this fight. Thank you.